What's going on guys? This is Gene Jensen and I just recently finished a trip down to Florida where I fished a few tournaments and came home with about $1,600. But the video that I want to do is I want to talk about the baits that I always take to Florida. So if you have a trip coming up and you want to head down to Florida, if you have some of these baits, you're going to be successful. All right, so Florida baits. The reason I'm doing a, a, a video specific to Florida is that Florida baits are very simple, very easy. Just a few colors, just a few styles, and you're set. And so I'm gonna do this one with the baits that I always take. The new baits that, are taking, that I'm taking now that are still that type, the types of baits that I would take, and uh, the ones that I'm the most successful on. All right, so a link to all of the tackle and everything that I use and everything I talk about in this video are gonna be down in the description, nice and categorized and organized so you guys can click on what you're looking for and be able to see it over on Tackle Warehouse. All right, so to start off with, the first bait and the one that I always take to Florida and I always have tied on and I always throw because I've had so much luck over the years with it is the Gambler Big Easy. Now, when I'm going down to Florida, speaking of Gambler, there are two companies that I always pay attention to, pay, pay attention to because they're based down in Florida and the guys that design their baits mostly fish down there and things like that. One is Gambler and the other one, believe it or not, is 13 Fishing. Now, 13 Fishing um, is coming out some really good stuff and I'm gonna show you some things, but the Gambler Big Easy is my paddle tail choice and I always fish it on the hook that was it was that was designed for it, which is the Gambler Big Easy hook. I have it in eighth ounce, and I'm not going to dig it out because it's at the bottom of the box. But I also have it in quarter ounce. And the only thing you have to do is you have to buy these little screw locks. You guys see that little screw lock? You get these little screw locks and you put them on there, and basically you just screw it on the screw lock and put it through, and it rigs up just like this, and it swims through everything and the reason i use the gambler hook is because one it's a big heavy wire hook and it works with the rod and the reel that I, and the line that i throw it on and it's the right size for the bait so the rod that i'm going to throw it on is a seven foot six or head or longer heavy action or heavy power uh bait caster eight one to one gear ratio reel with 65 pound braid this is a all-terrain vehicle and where you usually catch them down in florida is in the grass, in the, the Kissimmee grass, in the pads, and you really need to have nice heavy line to be able to get them out of that stuff because they'll get you wrapped up and break you off in a heartbeat if you're using straight fluorocarbon. But the Gambler Big Easy is always, always on. And I've, let's say last year or year before last, I went through in one day, no, one week of fishing, I went through almost 11 bags of these things because they were on them so hard and I caught so many stinking fish out at Felsmere on them. All right, so the next one is a rig. It is, it's a punch rig. And when I go down to Florida, I always think about, you know, on a cold, when a cold front pushes through in the, in the early spring in January, February, they always get up underneath the mats and you've got to punch those mats to be able to get those big fish out. And so I'm thinking real heavy stuff. And the first thing I think of when I go to a punch rig is, a big heavy weight. This is an ounce and a half tungsten weight. It is the heaviest one that I'm gonna throw. Anything heavier, and I do have two ounce just in case, but it seems like anything bigger than an ounce and a half, you know, an ounce and a half is really pushing it, but anything bigger than an ounce and a half, it blows the fish's mouth open so much that you only hook about maybe 25 or 30% of the fish that bite. And so I try to stay away from an ounce and a half, but a lot of times, when it's really thick, especially the high synth gets really thick, that's the only weight that's gonna punch through. I'm gonna leave a link up here in the corner uh, for how to punch and how to use a punch rig and that stuff, that, a video that I made a while ago. But for right now, I'm just gonna show you the components and the rods and reels and stuff like that. Okay, so when it comes to soft plastics, there are three colors that I take and only three colors. Black and blue, June bug, and some type of a purple. That's it. You can throw in a green pumpkin if you want to. I rarely ever need to switch to green pumpkin. If you go with those three colors, black and blue, June bug and purple, you're going to catch fish no matter what soft plastic you use. All right. So the punch baits that I typically go with are, are two. The 13 Fishing Invader, nice and slim. 
not a whole lot of action, and it punches through heavy cover really, really well. There's not a lot of appendages on the side to get snagged up. The other one is one that I've been using a lot longer than this one's been out, and that's the Gambler BB Cricket. Same sort of deal, real skinny, not a whole lot of action with the claws. It's just made to punch through. You shake it a couple of times and bring it back out. It's a target for those bass to hit, and it's something that goes through the grass real easy and doesn't get doesn't get and doesn't get hung up. All right. So those are the two I punch with. I might switch to other things, but as for coming through thick cover, these are the two best ones that I have in my arsenal. The next thing are your, are your options. What can you punch with? If it's not a whole lot of thick cover and I'm punching with up to a one ounce bait or a one ounce weight, I'm gonna go to a punch rig with, a, with an added skirt. These are made by Strike King, but I changed the skirts on them. Basically, it's a, it's a tungsten weight with a little collar keeper right there and you punch it through and there's a hole through it and you rig it the same way you would a punch rig. The other components that you're going to need are a punch stop. These are the six cents punch stops. I use them almost exclusively. They're just the best ones that I found. And then the new hook from, Gam or from Gamagatsu, which is their heavy cover flipping hook with the tungsten keeper. Doesn't tear up the baits quite so much. It stays on a whole lot better. It's a good thick hook. But the biggest thing is, is that you've got to have the eye of the hook uh, sealed off, closed off some, some way, welded or whatever. But you can't have uh, the eye of the hook um, with a gap in it or that braid will work its way through and you'll lose fish because of it. So those are the components, heavy hook, keeper, sinker, and bait. Now the, the rod and the reel and the line. With the rod, I'm going to go 7 foot 11 or 8 foot heavy or extra heavy flipping rod. This isn't a, a pitching rod with a light little tip or anything else. It's a it's a meat stick. It's huge. It's thick and heavy. Um, the next thing is going to be 65 pound braid. I'm going to use Seaguar Smackdown um, and then with uh, with the reel it's always going to be an 8 1 to 1 or 8 3 to 1 gear ratio reel so I can get the bait back to me fast and make the next pitch. You're literally throwing it in, letting it punch through, hopping it once and bringing it back. That's all you're doing over and over and over again until you get bit and then you work the area real tight. But the punch rig is a must when it comes to, to punching that heavy cover. The next bait, and it's another soft plastic. I'm telling you, down in Florida, soft plastics rule. So that's mainly what I take with me. I've got a bags and bags of soft plastics on this table right here. But I'm just going to pick a few of them. But the next category and the next type of worm that I bring is a swimming worm. Something that has little tails that kick or flop or anything like this. My staple is a zoom speed worm like these two right here. And they've got a little cut tail and when you swim them through the water they kick and when they fall they kick and there's several different ways to fish them. Talk about that in a second. But uh but this is the Ninja Tail from 13 Fishing. This is a joystick, a larger joystick from 13 Fishing. And then, where's the big gambler one that I use? Here's a watermelon red one that I, that I have in the bag, but I usually would not use that color. But uh, it's a this is a gambler burner worm. Big, heavy, same sort of deal, kick and tail worm and stuff like that. The way I rig these is I wanna, get, I wanna use the lightest weight that I feel I can get away with. So quarter ounce weight, or less. I Texas rig them. I peg the weight because I'm coming through grass and I don't want that weight to get wrapped around anything. So I peg the weight with the same thing, the six cents punch stop, quarter ounce or less. So you got eighth, you got sixteenth ounce. And a, um, let me break out the terminal tackle real quick and show you a little bit, show you the hook. The hook I'm going to use is the Gamagatsu G Finesse hook. Just like the flipping hook, but it's lighter weight lighter wire and that kind of stuff and because you really you're fishing this on fluorocarbon line you're not going to need a whole lot of, of of heavy wire to keep it from bending out and that kind of stuff so the g finesse hook is what i'm using three aught four aught i don't like to use a five aught i feel like it kills a lot of the action but throw it on a texas rig you throw it out and it comes through the grass real easy you can either swim it through the grass and pop it as it gets caught up in the grass and it pulls out or what I like to do is I like to drag it real slow because it's going to come up the grass and then it's going to fall down and going to come up and fall down. Same thing with the lily pad. Same, you're going to pull it up. It's going to be up and then it's going to fall back down. When it falls back down, it's going to kick down. And, the, and for some reason in Florida, those bass are really, really lazy. They don't like to chase a whole lot of time, a lot, whole lot of the time. So you want to be able to give them a nice, easy meal, especially when they're preparing to spawn. So 
a kicking worm, some type of a swimming worm on a lightweight Texas rig. Your rod is going to be a medium heavy, fast action rod, 20 pound test fluorocarbon, uh, 811 gear ratio or a 73 to 1 gear ratio reel, and you're all set. Absolutely fun. All right, so this next bait, those of you who have been following me a long time, with a long time, you can't laugh at me because this is a bait that I have refused to fish and pretty much refused to make a video about for a very, very long time. And it's the Gary Yamamoto Cinco. And there's a story behind it. I probably won't, I don't have time to get into it as to why I have so much disdain for this, for this bait. But when I'm down in Florida and the fishing is tough, this is how I catch them. Now, my history with Cinco's has not been good as in hookup ratios and losing them to fish. These are expensive. And so I always had, a, had an issue with fishing them because they were... You lost a lot of them. They broke off. Um, if you if you put those little uh, O-rings around them, you'd miss fish because the hook was at the wrong angle and stuff like that. Well, just recently, I started using something that changed my mind completely. And simple. I just got on Amazon and I ordered some clear heat shrink. And I'll put the link to it down there. Um, and you guys can't see it. I'll I try to pull it off, but it's a, just a little sleeve on here, a little clear heat shrink that I cut into a lot of pieces. And I'm telling you right now, guys, just a little lighter to shrink it up around there. I went through 10 fish on one Yamamoto Cinco before I had to take it off. And when to take it off, take that, um, sh heat shrink off the hook was hard. I had to cut the heat shrink to get the hook off. So it's not going to come off the heat shrink. The, the worm will eventually tear up, but that changed my mind. I had a 100% hookup. It lasted me a long time. It made it worth it to spend that much money on a bag of baits like that. So, you wacky rig it. I throw mine either on a medium heavy uh, spinning rod, just because it makes it easier to throw long distances when I'm covering a lot of water, or I throw it on a medium moderate action bait caster when I'm working things really close and I need pinpoint casts and that kind of stuff. Those are the two things I'm going to throw it on. 20 pound test braid on the main line on my on my spinning rod to about a 12 to 15 pound leader. And then uh, with the bait caster, I'm just going to throw it on on a straight fluorocarbon 15 pound and, uh, and work it really, really slow. The hooks that I use. Now when I say 100% hookup, a lot of it has to do with the style of hook. And the style of hook this is, this is a Cahill hook. It's a, it's a live bait hook that they've used for many, many years. It's got a little bit of bend in the eye, which makes it a little bit different. And of course, it's got the weed guards on it. But that Cahill hook, wacky rigged on a Cinco, does not miss fish. And the reason I, the way I figured that out is I had, I used to guide up in North Carolina and had some old guys come up. They were best friends. It was a blast because they ripped on each other all day long. It was a, just fun to guide them, but they had Cahill hooks that they had made just like this. Hand, you know, hand tied the, the weed guard and everything else. They were destroying the bass on these things and they weren't missing a single fish. And so that made me open my eyes. And finally, Gamagatsu came out with one that is a Cahill hook with a weed guard tied up the same way as those two old guys were year, did years ago. It works. It catches fish. It's a great beginner bait. I just don't like to fish it because it's like watching paint dry. Throw it out, let it sink to the sink, sink to the bottom. I can't, all I have to do is watch my line, but I don't like to watch my line. I like to feel the bite. That's where I get my adrenaline and you don't feel the bite on them most of the time. So anyway, but when you're in Florida, fish them. June bug, black and blue. No matter what time of the year you fish, you're gonna catch fish on a Cinco. Last but not least, the one that made me all the money. Okay, I went down there, I fished four tournaments. One of them was a benefit tournament, so I didn't win any money, but I ended up coming in third place. Um, and then the other ones were KBF tournaments, and I ended up coming home with a total of about $1,600. Almost all of my fish came on a Z-Man jackhammer chatterbait. Okay, and this was the color I fished most of the time, which is a uh, golden shiner. Fished it so much that the gold on the blade wore off. And uh, and I ended up being a silver blade, but it didn't really make much of a difference. Now for trailers, I usually use a, a paddle tail. 
but it's a paddle tail that's rigged upside down so the blade doesn't steal the water from the paddle. What happens is it curls up and it has no action and it really does not look good. So the, the trailers that I've started to using are started using are ones that don't have a paddle. I like the ones that have a fork tail. Okay, let me pull my favorite one out. This is a 13 fishing the jerk. And I figured this out last year when fishing this when uh, basically when I ran out of paddle tails. Um, I had to figure out find something in the boat. This is the jerk. It's a split tail, got kind of a flat body. And this son of a gun, when you just barely speed it up, when you're going real slow and all of a sudden you just do a real quick turn of the handle, because of the way the shape, the shape of, the, of the, uh, the trailer is, it causes an easier kick to the side than if you would use a different type of a trailer. And it made a difference because you'd have bass following it and you wouldn't know they were following it, but you'd, they would follow it a long ways and that little kick would cause them to have a reaction strike and bite it. So that's why that one is my favorite. Now, a Gambler just came out with a new one called the Komodo. This is one I picked up. I'm like, man, that's something new. And yes, it's by Gambler. And I'm in Florida, so I'm going to fish it. And it is a pretty cool little trailer. And it's small, compact. And I, use a, I didn't use a green pumpkin. I actually used a white one on this, but I'm going to rig a green pumpkin up. And it's not rigged to fish flat, okay? Or not meant to fish flat. You rig this one up pretty simple. Slide it in, but it comes out on the side. It's got a little hook uh, hook slot in the plastic that comes out on the side. And that's what it looks like. Gives it a bluegill profile. I dyed the tails of this in chartreuse uh, when I was using a green pumpkin one. And it really did look like a blue, bluegill swimming in the water. And it same sort of deal. It kind of gave it a pretty good little kick. But the best thing about it was is it gave me that profile of a baby bluegill, which is what the bass are eating right now. Um, play around with your trailers and you, you find that the trailers will cause different types of reactions or different types of actions that would cause a reaction bite from the bass. Um, but that's the majority of what I used. There were a few things I tried that didn't work. But having this um, these style of baits in those colors, no matter what time of the year you go to Florida, are going to be, you're going to be successful. You're, and once you find the fish, you're going to be able to catch them. I love going to Florida. I go there a couple of times a year. It is the land of the giants, and you never know when you're going to hook into a giant and get him to the boat. And just it just it's just something about catching big fish out of that thick grass. But I hope you enjoy this video. And like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water. Go out and catch some fish, and have a great day. We'll see you.